welcome friends to this new lecture of uh, soil science and technology and in this lecture we will be trying to finish the cation action capacity and anion action capacity where we left in the last lecture and then we will be trying we will be will be we will be discussing about a new topic that is adsorption of pesticides so uh, what is the relationship between ph and cec obviously generally cec increases with the ph and the permanent charge of 2 is to 1 type of clay that is pH dependent charge of humus and allophane and some 1 is to 1 type of clay hold exchangeable ions you already know that. So, at the pH is raised obviously the negative charge on some 1 is to 1 type of silicate clays allophane humus or even iron aluminum oxide increases and CEC also increases because if you remember the pH dependent charge when we are increasing the pH that will basically create the negative charge. So, creation of the negative charge is basically the increasing the CEC because it is attracting the cations in the soil surface or clay surface. So, as the pH is raised obviously for 1 is to 1 type of clay allophane and even in iron aluminum oxide there will be increase in CEC. And in alkaline condition, uh, CEC reflects the pH dependent charge as well as the permanent charge because you know that permanent charge is permanent. However, in case of alkaline condition just I told you, uh, it will also develop the negative charge uh, that is pH dependent negative charge. So, ultimately it will be a total of both permanent charge as well as pH dependent charge. So, the determination of CEC is generally done at pH 7 and uh, or 8.2. So, Exchangeable cations in field soils, you know the exchangeable ions in the field soil depend upon the climatic condition obviously. The iron and aluminum and complex aluminum hydroxy ions and H plus are most prominent in humid region and calcium, magnesium and sodium dominate uh, you know soil in low rainfall areas because um, you know uh, in, in case of highly leached areas obviously in case of highly leached warm and humid condition obviously there will be formation of oxysols. Now, why there will be formation of oxysol because there will be iron and aluminum oxides dominance. So, you will see that in humid region specifically in the warm and humid region there will be a predominance of iron aluminum ions. However, in the low rainfall areas obviously in arid region there will be predominance of different types of salts because of high evaporative demand and as a result of high evaporative demand these soils will be much more uh, I would say uh, dominated by calcium, magnesium and sodium ions. So, in a given soil the proportion of the cation capacity satisfied by a particular cation is termed as a saturation percentage of the cation. So, uh, for example, if 50 percent of the CEC is satisfied by calcium ions, uh, the exchange complex is said to have a calcium saturation percentage of 50. So, this terminology is specially useful in identifying the relative proportion of sources of acidity and alkalinity in the soil solution. So, cation exchange properties are typical for unamended clay loam surface soil in different climatic regions. So, if you can see one interesting trend you can see uh, we are here we are you know giving four different conditions. One is warm and humid region that is rep represented by altisols which is highly weathered so one of the highly weathered soils and then uh, you know cool and humid region and then represented by alphisols then semi arid region you know. Uh, you know uh, which is uh, denoted by ustols and then arid region that is natter grids. So, uh, you know if you see a trend the exchangeable H plus and L 3 plus will be continuously reducing from this warm humid region to cool humid to semi arid and arid region. So, 7.5 uh, 7, percent to 28 percent to 0 percent almost. And exchangeable calcium will show the reverse trend. I mean, uh, you can get 2 percent in the warm and humid region. However, we are getting uh, 9 percent in cool and humid region. It is increasing to 17 percent in semi arid region and 13 percent in the arid region. And also, exchangeable sodium, which is basically present in alkaline soil, which is another type of you know, which is which which which, which has the pH high high pH. Uh, so in this uh, basically, this alkaline soil, an exchangeable sodium is uh, present in a trace amount in case of warm and humid regions. Uh, it is very zero. It is very less zero point one percent 
in alfi soil again 4 percent in ustols and in arid soil which is uh, dominated by different sodium salts you will get almost 19 percent. So, you can see how these dominance of different cations are changing from a partic for a particular type of soil when it is uh, you know for a you know uh, for different climatic conditions. So, that shows the importance of climate for soil development as we have discussed in our earlier lectures of soil. So, cation saturation and nutrient availability obviously, if the percent saturation of some ions are high then those ions will be easily and rapidly displaceable obviously. Now, influences of complementary ions obviously, the strength of adsorption of common cations or most colloids in is, is generally follow the uh, this order. What is the order? That is, you know, aluminum is strongly adsorbed, followed by calcium, then magnesium, then potassium, which is showing the similar adsorption capacity and which is further, uh, you know, further more than sodium. So, potassium can be easily replaced by L3 ions in the acid soil and it will be available for the plants. Okay. So, in the acid soil aluminum will replace this potassium and this potassium will be available to the plants. So, there are some nutrient antagonism. So, this is another important aspect. There is some nutrient antagonism that in certain soil cause inhibition of uptake of some cations by plants. For example, sometimes high potassium levels are known to limit the uptake of magnesium. So, that means potassium and magnesium has a some nutrient antagonism even when significant quantities of magnesium are present into the soil. So, that shows the different interaction or influence of different complementary cations in the soil uh, system. So, um, here you can have a better idea in this uh, diagram. So, basically it is a soil colloid basically in, in our case that is uh, clay and this is a root extending H plus ion to exchange cations on the colloid and in the cations uh, you know, in the in the in the colloid surface you can see there are several types of cations like sodium and then potassium and they are basically loosely held complementary ions with large oscillation zones. So, if we compare potassium and sodium, sodi sodium has has more large oscillation zone. So, this is called the oscillation zone and in this oscillation zone uh, you know they are loosely held this sodium. So, uh, sodium is easily replaceable than that of potassium. So, root uh, you know and in the another another condition obviously, this aluminum and potassium are present. However, these aluminum are more tightly held complementary ions with small oscillation zone than that of potassium. So, in these two conditions you are seeing basically the difference in oscillation zones and ultimately difference in their uh, affinity to the clay colloid. So, the half circles are loosely held with the soil. So, these are the half circles which are basically loosely held in the soil and the root will take the cations from the soil in exchange with the H plus ions. So, in the left figure the loosely held sodium plus will be easily taken up by the plant and in the right figure the clay plus will be easily taken up by the plant and uh, you know the K plus will be comparatively more vulnerable to be replaced and sent to the soil solution and K plus will be more available to the plant uptake and leaching. So, this is how the interaction or com between complementary cations influence their uptake by different plants. Okay. So, this is now let us consider another important very very important topic that is percent based saturation or BS. Now, percent based saturation of the CEC occupied by it is basically the percentage of CEC which is occupied by the basic cations. So, we have calculated already the CEC. Now, if you can calculate what is the percentage of the total CEC which has been occupied which is contributing which, which, which is being contributed by the basic cations that is calcium, magnesium and potassium then we can calculate the percent based saturation. So, basic cations are distinguished from the acid cations H plus and Al 3 plus. So, if you can distinguish basic cations will be calcium, magnesium and potassium whereas acid cations will be aluminum and H. Uh, uh, and uh, H plus. So, at an approximately soil pH of 5.4 or less Al 3 plus is present in a significantly high concentration then that hinders the growth of most of the plant species 
and the lower the soil pH, the greater the amount of toxic L3 plus. So therefore, soil with high percent base saturation are generally more fertile because when there will be high dominance of L3 plus, obviously that will create the nutrient toxicity or L3 or aluminum toxicity. So we don't need that condition. We need a fertile soil that means that can support the plant growth. That can, that can support the plant growth, that can uh, supply the required nutrient to the plant. So obviously, the soil with a high percent base saturation will have more fertility and they have little or no acid cations L3 plus that in the toxic to the plant. So, uh, you know, this high you know, percent base saturation soil, they have little or no acid cations like L3 plus that is toxic to the plant growth. So, soil with high percent base saturation have a higher pH obviously, therefore, they are more buffered against the acid cations from plant fruits and soil processes that acidify the soil like nitrification, acidic, acid rain etc. We will discuss nitrification uh, in our uh, coming lectures and also they can contain greater amounts of essential plant nutrients uh, cation like potassium, calcium, magnesium for the use by the plants. So, these are very important. What is the formula percent base saturation? The percent base saturation is basically calcium plus magnesium plus potassium over total CEC multiplied by 100. So, depending on soil pH, the soil base saturation may be a fraction. This is very important. So, depending on the soil pH, the soil base saturation or percent base saturation may be a fraction of CEC or approximately equal to the CEC. So, in general, if the soil pH is below 7, the base saturation is less than CEC because there must be some acidic cations. However, at pH 7 or higher, soil clay mineral and organic matter surface are occupied by basic cations and thus base saturation will be equal to the CEC in that condition. Okay. So, what are the diff effect of different colored types? Difference exists in the tenacity with which several types of colloids will specific cations. So, at a given percentage base saturation smeke types, uh, you know, at given percentage base saturation smeke types which have a high cat, you know, charge density per unit of colloid surface hold calcium more tightly or more strongly than that of kaolinate. So, calcium percentage will have to be increased up to a certain percentage to satisfy the need of plant in, in, in case of smectites and kaolinite can supply calcium at relatively lower percentage of base saturation and obviously, the need to add limestone to the two soils will be somewhat differently partly because of this factor and we will uh, we'll discuss why we add limestone in why, when we will discuss the soil acidity. Now, let us discuss anion exchange. Anion exchange is also same anion, uh, it is basically the ability of the soil to exchange anions from its surrounding medium and anion are held in two major ways. One, firstly, they are held by anion adsorption mechanism similar to the responsible for similar which are those responsible for cation exchange. Secondly, they may actually react with surface oxides or hydroxide forming more definitive inner sphere complexes. Now, in the last lectures, we have discussed what are the inner spheres, inner sphere complex and outer sphere complex. So, I am not going to uh, discuss them in details. So, anion adsorption mechanism, the basic principle of anion exchange are similar to those of cation exchange and the charge on the colloids are positive and the exchange is among negatively charged anions. The positive charge developed due to the pH dependent charge, you know that and the positive charge is associated with the surface of kaolinite, iron, aluminum oxides and allophene and attract anions such as sulphate and nitrate. You can see here, you know, the nitrate is first adsorbed to the soil colloid and which is where they are getting replaced by another cation that is chloride. So, just in case of cation exchange, equivalent quantities of ammonia, uh, nitrate and chloride are, uh, are exchanged here. So, the reaction can be reversed and nutrient anions so released can be absorbed by the plant, absorbed by the plants. So, AEC generally decreases with the increased pH. Obviously, when there will be increased pH, there will be negative charge development. So, when there will be negative charge development due to the pH dependent charge, obviously, the, CEC, uh, the AEC or anion exchange capacity will increase. So, this is quite, uh, you know, uh, with the increase of the pH, uh, I am sorry, with the increase of soil pH, there will be development of negative charge. So, when there will be development of negative charge, obviously the anion exchange capacity will decrease 
and catenation capacity will increase because it will attract more cation and it will repel more and uh, you know anions and attract more cations. So, uh, this graph basically shows that relationship. So, what is the relationship between weathering and CEC and AEC level? Obviously, you can see uh, there are three different condition, mostly two is to one type of clays. Uh, you know, you can see here three different condition. In the first condition is a mild weathering condition, there is an intermediate weathering condition, a strong weathering condition. Mild weathering condition, obviously, two is to one type of clays, intermediate weathering condition, one is to one type of clays, and strong weathering condition, mostly iron, aluminum oxide clays. We have already discussed that. So, increasing weathering is basically in this direction. So, and as we are increasing the weathering, obviously the cationation capacity will decrease. Obviously, you will see most cationation capacity in case of 2 is to 1 type of soil, which will further reduce to 1 is to 1 type of soil and it will reduce to almost 0 in case of iron aluminum oxides. And in and for anionation capacity, we will see the reverse trend. So, as we are increasing from mild to intermediate to strong weathering condition, the anionation capacity will further increase. Okay. So, so, we have completed this uh, catenation capacity topic. Let us uh, start another important topic that is sorption of pesticides in the soil. So, we will be covering the importance of pesticide sorption, then distribution coefficient, then binding of biomolecules and uh, to clay and humus. So, importance of sorption of pesticides in soil, you know that soil can absorb you know adsorb charge organic ions by either AEC or CEC because either it is positive or negative depending on the positive or negative nature of the uh, charge organic ions it will be adsorbed and sorption can reduce the movement of the ground water because when it will be sorbed obviously it will not leach down to the ground water and it can allow time for soil microorganism to break the chemical down to less toxic byproducts. So, when it will be adsorbed by the clay colloids, it will be further, you know, the chance of further leaching down to the groundwater will be reduced and there will, therefore, it will get more time uh, for the microorganism to degrade this. And also, it can also produce inner sphere complexes. So, it is common for organic compounds to be absorbed within the soil organic colloids by a process called partitioning and the hydrophobic part will not be adsorbed by the moist clays. Now, what is partitioning? Now, this is a very good picture of partitioning process. Now, this method is also known as the extraction method. So, the extraction means drawing a compound out of a mixture using a solvent. So, solvent partitioning is you know we can we can call it solvent partitioning is more specific. So, it means compound have a choice of two solvents that they can dissolve in. Some compound dissolve in one solvent and some compound dissolve in the other solvent that way the compound in the mixture becomes separated in two groups. So, basically you can see here in this first condition two compounds are dissolved in a, in a, in a solvent and now we are adding a second solvent which is denoted by this uh, uh, circles hollow circles. So, we are basically mixing the two different solvents as well as two compounds together in the here and finally, when the solvent separates again, the compounds go into one solvent on uh, the other based on their polarity. So, based on their polarity, they will separate into two different solvents. So, this is called partitioning process. Okay. So, uh, this is very important for pesticide sorption. How? We will see. So, so, this partitioning can be quantified using a partitioning coefficient or Kp, which is basically concentration on solid over concentration in the solution. So, obviously, you can see there are you know, this, this shows this graph shows the relationship between CEQ, which is uh, equivalent concentration or uh, per, uh, and uh, the you know and concentration on solid. So, CEQ is basically concentration in solution and here it is Q is basically concentration on solid. So, basically this line shows the higher Kp and this, li this line shows the lower Kp. So, high Kp means higher sorption obviously and low Kp means weak sorption. So, high Kp means hydrophobic compounds on organic matter when hydrophobic compounds like the organic pollutants like organic pesticides they are hydrophobic in nature. So, they will not uh, you know they will not mix well with water. So, they will mix more with the you know 
organic matter into the soil and uh, you know water soluble compounds which are hydrophilic that prefers to stay in the solution will be responsible for this low Kp. So, uh, let us move ahead and see what are the organoclase. Now, organoclase is a very important aspect. The hydrated metal cations like calcium that are adsorbed on the surface of the smectites can be replaced with large organic cations and giving rise to what we are termed as organoclase that is smectite organoclase specifically. Now, such clay surface are more friendly towards the applied organic compounds making it possible for the clay to participate in partitioning. Obviously, when these clays are more friendly towards the applied organic carbon, you know, compounds, it will take part more into the partitioning processes. So, let us see an example of sorption. So, uh, this is a very good example of sorption process and experiment. Now, this experiment was done by a gentian violet color solution and in a sandy loam soil with moderate CEC and a sandy soil with negligible CEC. So, these are two uh, you know different soil which is sandy loam soil with moderate CEC and this is sandy soil with negligible CEC. So, after we leach these two soil with this gentian violet solution, a clear solution and we, we, we collect the leachate at below with in, in a beaker. So, after leaching we will see a clear solution was found in case of sandy loam soil and in contrast, water drained from the sandy soil was still purple in color in case of uh, you know in case of sandy soil with the lower CC. That's so that means higher CC or moderate CC because in the sandy loam soil there was some amount of silt or organic matter. However, in case of uh, you know sandy soil there is low amount of organic matter and due to the presence of organic matter in case of you know in case of sandy loam soil. Um, you know these organic matter will adsorb all the, the you know the, all the when you know gentian blue solution. So, ultimately it will um, you know the clear solution will leach. However, in the second case the total so there is no change so further the purple color solution was leached down. So, that shows the importance of sorption by different by organic matter which is present in the soil. Now, this is a picture of an African field and you can see after applying so in this field uh, scientists have applied you know the farmers have applied herbicides and the field is still full of weeds. What is the reason why there is a bizarre condition we are applying the herbicides to kill the weeds, but we still finding that this is full of weeds. So, what happens the soil has a upper air horizon you know what is air horizon with a low CEC and a clay subsoil with high CEC argillic. Now, you know what is argillic? Argillic is dominated by clay, clay mineral. So, this soil have a upper air horizon with the low CEC and lower argillic horizon with high CEC. So, when they applied all the pesticide, all the pesticides were adsorbed by subsoil clay so that there is no longer available to be taken out by the roots of the weeds. So, as a result of the, that, the weeds further grow there. So, that also shows the importance of sorption of different organic pesticides by uh, you know clay and different other component which are present into the soil. Okay. Now, what is distribution coefficient? The tendency of a pesticide or other organic compound to leach into the groundwater is determined by the solubility of the compound and by the ratio of amount of chemical salt by the soil to remain into the solution. And this ratio is basically known as the distribution coefficient or KD. So, KD is basically you know milligram of chemical salt per kg of soil over milligram of chemical per liter of soil solution. So, uh, the unit of KD obviously it is liter per kg and it depends upon the nature of the soil obviously the variation is related mainly to the amount of organic matter or organic carbon into the soil. So, it can also be represented by using a similar ratio we call it KOC or other name is organic carbon distribution coefficient. So, KOC is basically mg of chemical salt per kg of organic carbon and mg of chemical per liter of solution. 
So, basically uh, we are you know this is the formula of uh, KOC that is KD over gram of organic carbon per kg of soil. So, uh, let us see KD and KOC are used for herbicides and metabolites. Uh, you know one soil which has higher KD and KOC values will have solve more uh, pesticide obviously and uh, these high values indicates that chemicals are strongly absorbed by the soil and less susceptible to leaching. So, these are some KD as KOC values for several widely used herbicides like atrazine, diethyl atrazine, metachlor, metallochlor and all these thing you can see what are the variation of their KD and KC values and these are very important for the sorption in the soil. Now, binding of biomolecules and to clay and humus is very important. Now, the bond between biomolecules and the colloid is often quite strong so that the biomolecules cannot be easily removed by washing or exchange key reactions. And the initial attraction may be between charged colloidal surface and positively or negatively charged functional groups or biomolecules. And this type of reaction has two environmental impact. Obviously, the first the bound firstly the bound chemical remains for a long period of the long period longer period in the soil as the microorganism cannot recognize and react with the target sites and secondly some chemicals remain active after adsorption to so toxin remains toxic to the susceptible organism enzyme continues to catalyze the reaction so these are two types of impacts environmental impacts you can get from this sorption of biomolecules uh, you know to the clay and humus. Let us see some example Bt toxin you already know that. Now, Bt is basically a toxin produced by a soil microorganism called Bacillus thuringiensis and basically it is used for organic farming for protecting crops from insect damage. So, it is adsorbed by soil. So, the 2 is to 1 type of clay Montmorillonite soil you can see in this graph obviously the 2 is to 1 type of soil like Montmorillonite can adsorb this toxin up to 30 to 80 percent of its mass. So, 1 is to 1 type of clay obviously it is not that efficient because of uh, low charge development and obviously the adsorption reaction completed within a minute in case of Montmorillonite. Second, let us see DNA. Now, it, this is a scanning electron micrograph or same image, ACM image of DNA from Bacillus subtilis bound on kaolinite clay, which is uh, represented in the left picture, or Montmorillonite clay, which is shown in the right picture. So, the arrow point stands for basically the strands of, uh, you know, strands bound to DNA stands of bound DNA. Now, DNA bound to clear humus is protected from decomposition, but retains the capability of transferring genetic information to living soil. So, this is implication of DNA sorption in the soil. Antibiotics. The antibiotics also adsorbed by soil colloids by the process of CEC. It also has a very high KD values. After sorption, it develops positively charged sites in the soil. And increasingly, you know, increasingly research shows that even though sorption to soil colloids may reduce their efficacy somewhat, the soil bind antibiotics still works against bacteria. And there is evidence that at least some antibiotics can be taken up from soil by food crops and so enter into the human food supply. So, it will increase the resistance against the life saving drugs into the body. So, this is the implication. And uh, let us see one example of antibiotic that is chlorotetracycline. It is the first antibiotic which has been uh, you know uh, uh, developed now. Adsorption isotherms illustrates the retention of chlorotetracycline or CTC by Montmorillonite and kaolinite as a function of ionic background cation. So, you can see the Montmorillonite or uh, uh, Smectite obviously Montmorillonite is showing more uh, you know adsorption uh, you know more adsorption than that of kaolinite and calcium you know CTC retention decrease in the presence of calcium nitrate than that of sodium nitrate obviously because calcium is more competitive with CTC than sodium. So, CTC is adsorbed by the soil via CEC. So, you can see uh, in case of presence of sodium nitrate uh, 
the adsorption is higher however in case of presence of calcium nitrate the adsorption is somewhat lower because calcium is more competitive with uh, ctc than sodium so you, these are some complex interaction between the different different molecules which is present into the soil which we apply into the soil and the components which are already present in the soil and uh, you know you can search some literature you can uh, you can obviously consult some literature to gain a in depth knowledge of these sorption characteristics these are very interesting and i would suggest you to go and uh, you know discuss and you know and to and to consult some literature to gain more in depth knowledge of the sorption process which will be uh, giving you more practical perspective of learning soil science and technology thank you guys uh, we are completing this uh, uh, week 5 of lectures so we'll be starting uh, the week 6 of lectures uh, uh, from our next lecture hope you have understood and learned something new uh, in this week we have we have discussed uh, you know uh, several important topics of soil chemistry and we'll be also uh, discussing some other important topics of soil chemistry related to the soil uh, you know silicate clays in the week 6 so uh, uh, thank you and uh, let us meet and uh, you know in our next weeks lecture